Hi guys, um, Dylan from the Postmark here. I hope you guys are all doing well. Um, there's been some cob coming out on the False Bay Coast. Um, just gonna show you guys a little bit of what I use from my past experiences and why I use it. So what I'm gonna be doing today is making a cob trace. It's just something that I like to use. I like using the lander dukes. Um, you can get them at any kind of tackle shop, uh, suburban, um, Chakita, I buy minor Chakita. It's quite reasonably priced, very, very cheap. Okay, so the line that I use is any 5.5 diameter. Um, this one is a Kingfisher, breaking strain 16 kilos. Okay, what you're gonna do is just gonna take a little bit of the line, make sure that you have enough to work with. This one I'm going to make with two of these lovely long shank fours. They're very thin hooks. So all you're going to do is you're going to take the one hook, put it through the loop, make sure that you have enough to work with, and tie it off with a normal blood knot like you would do all your other hooks. So it's going to be one, two, three, and four. Put it back through the loop. Just pull it tight. Make sure to wet your knot. That's very important, guys. Okay. That one is on now. Alright. So you're going to use a tag in for your next hook. But this is very important. You want your spacing of your hooks to be more or less like this when you finish. More or less something like that. And that's going to be for your bait. Because you don't want it to be too far apart. Because otherwise your bait is not going to cover the whole look. Same knot. Pull it tight. There you have it. Pull the tag end off. And there you have your two perfectly in line. Okay. A lot of guys uh, use different hook trace lengths um, from what I've picked up in a lot of current. You're going to make your hook trace a little bit shorter because that current is already there, there's already enough movement when there's not a lot of current, very quiet not a lot of um, waves and things like that, you know, everything's nice and calm you're gonna make it a little bit longer because there's not that much movement in the water but we'll get more into that when I put the lovely Miss Bunker and Choka combo on so there's a variety of floats you guys can use um, I prefer these ones, uh, make them myself, you know, you just have to cut them, aerodynamics is very important, this is from a buoy, an old recycled buoy, um, you guys can also get these floats, I know a lot of you guys are seeing guys using it, they do work, they do work, I just prefer these ones, the yellow ones, a little bit more hassle, but um, it's, a lot of the time it's worth it. So you're going to take your bait needle, you're going to take the float, and you're going to push it in as straight as you can. Just all the way through. It's a little bit of hard work, but the results is good. Okay, it's through. Just want to make it all a little bit bigger. Alright. So on this one that I made, I just have a little notch there. I don't know if you guys can see it little notch that just goes on the line like that it clips the line on and you put your float all the way through okay you will see it's pretty loose now but once you put the toothpick in there it is perfect it will stay there wherever you put it it will stay there you can see with this trace you have a lot of movement as well 
lot of movement and it floats very very nicely so with the bait that I put on here a lot of guys believe that you need a big bait to catch a big fish uh, are big to differ so um, the bait that I'm going to be putting on now is uh, Choka up to my bunker bait this was called a cork bait they've been there's been a lot uh, much bunker at Cork Bay recently and this is a choka also called by Garth I went, caught it yesterday I think and yeah it's pretty fresh fresh bait is very important when making your bait always remember that aerodynamics is very important when you want to reach the back banks your line diameter also plays a big part basically the thinner the more aerodynamic the better so I'm going to show you a bait that I use and I use it with a lot of success. So you take your mus bunker, you will see that there's a ridge running all down here, like the lateral line. You will feel it is very, very sharp. I like to cut that off. So you just take your knife and you just cut like that. You just cut it off. This little bit here, don't worry about that. So long you have this off. This is what you want to get off. That is just bone. And it's very sharp as well. Do the same thing on the other side. Always make sure your knives are sharp, guys. Right. So we're going to take the most bunker like that. And we're just going to cut just like that on the gill plate, right through the head, right down, all the way to the tail. So now you're going to have two holes. You can put them on all like this. You can put them on like that. You can put this one on as well. But this is what I like to do. So, just going to trim the tail off, and I'm just going to cut it down like that. Okay, you will now see this piece of the head, this piece of the head that you can pull off. So you just have a piece like that with the gills. Right. So now you take your two hooks and remember the bait is caught already. You don't have to catch the bait. So just lay it on top of your bait like that and cotton it up. Always make sure to keep your bait as straight as possible and as aerodynamic as possible. That's very important. The bank is a little bit defrosted. Does make it a little bit more tricky, but end result will be the same. Okay, now we're going to do the choker. So there's an easy way to clean the, the squid. You just take your fingers like that underneath the wings and you run it all the way up, all the way down. You can see you can pull the skin off. Just like that. 
So a lot of guys throw away the head and the tentacles and everything in the gut. I normally just leave it like that. Doesn't hurt anything. So what we're going to do is, remember I've been speaking about aerodynamics. You don't need a big bite to catch a big fish. But what you do need is to reach that fish. So all you need is a thin strip of chopper. You can just cut it like that. Be careful when you cut. There is a piece of backbone here. It's almost like plastic. But that you can just pull out. Right. That is all you want. Just that. So what you're going to do with this is... I don't tenderize my choker. Uh, choker I use more as a barrier to keep in all of that pieces of flesh. Okay, and now we can start at the bottom. I'm just going to cotton it up all the way. Making sure it's as straight as possible. Having your bait straight is very important guys. Very important. just the way that I like to do it you can see there's still lots of movement in it it's going to float nice in the water I generally make the hook trace about that long in water that has current um, water that doesn't have current probably about <coughs> that long so that's just the way that I like to do it um, I hope you guys learned something and I hope it works for you So I'm going to be making a cup trace or showing you guys how to make a cup trace. Just something that I use. Um, I like to use the landed foils, long shank, uh, long shank. Um, <laughs> yeah, today I'm going to be showing you guys how I make my cup trace. I like to use the landed hooks. It's very sharp, very good for the price. I buy mine at Can I have one hook please? <laughs> 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 <laughs>